All praises to Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai, Barsham Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalawam to the, to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson on the birthday spirit, man, right? And people that celebrate their birthdays and want to be glorifying in themselves to, um, to, to try and get some kind of reverence and praise for themselves, man. And even the people also that force this same ritual and this same demonic spirit onto their children, man, right? And it's a, it's, a, it's a warning to all you people that do such things that you need to fix up and purge that out of yourself, man, because the Bible is against such things, all right? The Bible is against such things, man. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1, a good name is better than precious ointment and a day of death than the day of one's birth, right? So if anything... In this world, people should celebrate the day that somebody dies, right? And and give remembrance unto the day when where somebody died, rather than into the day when someone was born, man, right? You're not supposed to be glorifying in your birthday. The Bible says ultimately that we're not supposed to be glorying in ourselves anyway. So if that includes we're not supposed to glory in our wisdom, glory in our might, right, or glory in our riches, then we're definitely not supposed to glory in the day that we was born also. Right, because what have we got to do with glory in a day when we was born when that wasn't even our choice anyway? Right? And when you go into the Bible and you see all the prophets that spoke on the day of their birth, they was always cursing the day of their birth out, man. They was always saying, Why was I born? That I wish I wasn't even born, man. That's the kind of spirit that they was in. Jeremiah chapter nine and verse twenty three does say if Yahweh, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory of glory in this, that he understandeth and of me, that I am Yahweh, which that I am Yahweh, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith Yahweh. He don't delight in you glorifying in your birthday, right? Because if you're of a person of the elect, you're supposed to know that we ain't nothing to glory in anyway, man. Right? We ain't nothing to glory in. We ain't supposed to be receiving no no praise. Oh, oh it's my birthday. Cherish me. And all of that kind of stuff. We ain't supposed to be doing that, man. Because what have we got to be glorifying in our, our the day that we was born anyway? We've got we've been given days to glory in. Right? We've been when you read Leviticus the 23rd chapter, you've we've been given days that we're supposed to reverence, and none of them are our birthday. None of them are our birthday. None of them are even Yahweh Shai's birthday. So if we ain't supposed to even be praising and glorifying in Yahweh Shai's birthday, some kind of memorial, some ceremony. Then we ain't supposed to be glorying in our own. Yahweh Shai never celebrated his birthday. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what makest thou? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Didn't you receive the day of your birth? You never chose when you were going to be born and said, Oh, I'm born on August the 19th. So you've got to reverence me now every single year on August the 19th. And then now it's so bogged out in this world that people don't even want to do just a birthday. They're trying to do a birthday weekend or they're trying to do a birthday week, right? And if these people have got enough money and enough pride combined with it, they'll try and do a birthday fortnight or a birthday week, man. That's how wicked these people are. And it don't mean that you can't repent from that, but you got to fix up if you're doing that, man. And all you women out there as well that are pushing that kind of stuff on your children, man, right? The child ain't talking about no birthday and this and birthday that you are you're the pushing on them and the same the same way you women push christmas on your children man but then when something happens to you then you're going to expect people to cry but it's not going to be going like that first moving chapter 4 and verse 7 for who maketh thee to differ from another and what hast thou that thou didst not receive now if thou didst receive it why dost thou glory as if thou didst as if thou hadst not received it so what's the point in glorying in your birthday when that was given unto you. That's not nothing for you to be praising. It's not nothing for you to be trying to get no reverence for. And when you look it up, right? When you look it up, among people that are into Satanism, the birthday is the greatest day for them, that for people that are into that wickedness. So if them people, that's their greatest day, then we're supposed to be the complete opposite. And according to the Bible, we are of the complete opposite because I already read it. In Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, that the day of one's death, according to the Bible, is better than the day of one's birth. So we are the complete opposite. We, as Bible believers, are supposed to be. 
to those that believe in Satan, man. Job chapter 3 and verse 1. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born. And the night which it was said, There is a man child conceived. So he was an unknown glorifying in himself and being like, I'm going to put, oh, there's going to be another candle on there now. Or oh, I'm getting so old soon, I'm going to need to buy a bigger cake to fit all these candles. We ain't supposed to do that, man. We're not supposed to be doing that. And then every, as you get older, talking about, oh, I can't barely get the wind out to blow out these candles. You ain't supposed to do that, man. That's just a pride show. That's just a show of pride, man. And a show of trying to make out like you're some kind of deity to be, to be receiving reverence. And then you people get proud and try and get arrogant if you don't get the things that you thought you deserve for your birthday. When you didn't achieve nothing to become born. You didn't do nothing to become born. Your parents did. Right? Your parents did something for you to be born. Not you. So what reverence do you think you deserve? And your parents doing what they did. Wasn't even of their own self. It was of Yahweh. Why that caused to happen. People are jokers man. Y'all all want some kind of. Respect for the, for the things that you don't deserve respect for, man. But when the destruction comes, a lot of you people are going to be looking stupid, man. And a lot of women are going to be destroyed, man. Because they're, they're the main ones that are bringing and pushing this wickedness on the children. Because in the, in most of the cases, even when the father, when the mum and the father break up, right? The, ch the mother is the one that gets access to these children, man. And, the who, and therefore, it's the mother that's teaching up these children from the days of their youth, man. Which let me get that. Let me get that, man. Everyone try and make her like women are so righteous and they're not. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1. Remember now the creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. But all these mums that be having access to their children and they've ran the dad out of the house, right? Or the father doesn't really have any power in this society to be able to like, do what he needs to do, to be able to really guide his children properly. Right? Well, then the child ends up getting raised according to what this world says is the right way. And the mom ends up thinking about how she can raise up her child to be the best that they can be according to this world. Right? Not according to Yahweh. Because they don't really care about that. They really care about trying to build up a child to be according to what this world can be. So, oh, they've got to be charming according to what this world says. Or they've got to be well dressed according to what this world says. You're supposed to be well dressed. Or they've got to do the whole birthday thing and the Christmas thing and the Easter eggs, right? According to what this world says you're supposed to do it, man. That's what this world's about. A lot of women are going to be destroyed, man, for, go, for going into these things. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1. Remember now the Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Right. And the, the, what does the scriptures also also say? Train up a child. Let me see if I can find that scripture. Let me type in train. Train child. One second. Train. Train. Child. And let's see what comes up, man. Here we go. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And a lot of you wicked mums out there, right, that think you're doing the right thing, right? And a lot of you silly women out there that you think you're doing the right thing. And even though you've been told not to do certain things, you're saying, forget that. I'm going to do what I want to do, right? You're training up your child in the way that they shouldn't go, right? So that when they're old, they don't depart from that. And a lot of you women are taking your children around people, around men in dresses. How about, let's talk about that too. And then you women want to talk like you're righteous. You women are not righteous, man. You're not righteous. Really. Like, I know it might hurt you all to hear that, but you're not righteous. And your little feelings and emotions is what makes you think you're doing the right thing. That's what makes you all think you're doing the right thing. And you're thinking, oh, I don't want my child to feel left out of this or I don't or I don't want to be left out of that I don't want to be the odd one out well if you want to keep that mentality of not being the odd one out 
well, here's what's going to happen. The day is going to come, right? And I'm going to read the prophecy, man. I'm going to read the prophecy. And everyone's going to really get the chance to not be an odd one out and be joined on to everybody else. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. That's everyone, right? If that includes everyone. Small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, ultimately means everyone, right? That's going to be all types of people, right? To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, to receive a karagma in their right hand or in their foreheads, man, right? A day is going to come where all people, the majority of people, man, apart from, in fact, let me get verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world, but the majority of people are going to be worshipping. So just like how when the when when the March 2020 event came and you saw a multitude of people taking place in that particular thing, right? In that particular ceremony, right? There's going to be a new ceremony that's going to be required of the people. But this time, it's going to affect the life a lot more because if you don't take part in this, you're not going to be able to buy anything and you're not going to be able to sell anything. You're not going to be able to be a considered a citizen of this society, man. And a lot of you women don't like being an odd one out. You have what's known as a hive mind, right? So when that day comes and it's coming, a lot of you women are going to take part in that, man. And what you'll notice about women, man, just like what Eve did, they don't want to die alone, you know? They can't just do something wicked and it be them that does it. They have to try and lie about it and try and drag everybody else in with it, man. They don't want to die alone. They have to try and drag everybody else down with them. So a lot of men are going to be dragged down with their women too. And a lot of children are going to be dragged down with their parents, man. But some of the children are going to say, nah, to their mom, I ain't taking that. Some of them are going to say, nah, I ain't taking it. And they're going to leave there from their mom and run away from their mom with their dads, man. They're going to bounce from their moms in that day, a lot of children are. A lot of these, like, 12, 13-year-old teenagers and that, they're going to say that, think that their mum's lost their mind and they're going to be of the elect as well, man. And a lot of these, some of these daughters too, they're going to bounce from their mums in that time. And they're going to, their mum, their mums are going to perish, but the child's going to be saved, man. Verse 16, and the cause of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a karagma in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, so if he that had the mark, <laughs> so, so lucky, man. So if he that had the karagma, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name, because even when you say that word now, even when you say that word that begins with M and ends in K, to take the things down sometimes, man. You can't even speak how you want to speak, man. And that's thanks to wicked women too. Because they've been trying to cancel every damn body. They've been trying to cancel everybody because their little feelings and emotions was hurt, man. Which is the reason why they're down for every single ceremony, any day that Esau comes up with. It's always women at the forefront wanting to celebrate that. All the time, man. All the time. If they make a national, which it probably already exists anyway, national twerk day, all you would be on that. If they make a day where people, there's a day where people in the world get naked and ride their bicycles around New York and stuff like that, or and ride the train in their underpants, people do that. Women. If they make a Valentine's Day and all of this, which they, which exists, women are down for that. And National Woman's Day, they're down for that. National Anything Day, and they're always down for whatever dumb celebration comes about, man. Whatever stupid festival where you can dress like a harlot. It's always women at the front of it, man. Go in there. It's like they can pick out a stupid outfit with barely any material and clothing. It's like they can try and get some more glory and praise for themselves, man. Because ultimately, a woman's glory is herself, right? And that's straight from the scriptures, man. And let me get it. A woman's glory is herself, man. Where is that scripture? It's definitely not here. Is it in 11? A woman's glory. Let me type in, see if I can find it, man. Glory and hair. Here we go. The glow. Wait. Chapter 
the glory of a man. What the glory of a man? I'm pretty sure it's by here. Where is that man? The glory of a woman is a man, he says. But the glory of a woman is her hair. I'm probably looking right at it, man. I'm typing glory of a man. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering, which pretty much goes into how a woman's glory is ultimately herself, man. Right? A man's glory is his woman, but a woman glories in herself. So if she's got a day that's specifically for her and about her, right? She already gets a so-called, in this society, she already gets a so-called wedding day, right? But that ain't enough for them, you know? And that's why a lot of women really get married anyway. Because they don't really give a, give two crap about the guy, right? They want a special day and they want a two hundred thousand pounds spent on that spent on that wedding, right? Even though they could spend spend that money on a house and pay off half of a house at least for a decent enough sized house for their family that they're trying to build, man. But they're like, nah, forget that. The man's got to have enough money to give me that two hundred thousand pound party and the house because he's got to praise me. You know what I mean? Which, because a woman is a man's glory anyway, he doesn't have a problem glorying his woman if she deserves it. But what's happened in this wicked world is that women are receiving glory when they don't even deserve it anyway. They ultimately really deserve to have their spirit sent back up to the heavens, if we're being real about it. But we're in a time of grace right now. So for all the women that are out there doing such things, being proud and being about themselves and trying to just go for their own wicked mind, right? They need to fix up, man. Because when the day comes where all hell's breaking loose, men ain't going to be trying to trying to talk with you women no more and persuade you to try and get right. We're going to just say, you know what? Fuck y'all hoes. Yeah? If we're out in the wilderness, right? If men are out in the wilderness and, 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 and they see some of these women that have went past them on the street laughing and scoffing, you think they're going to take the time out and be like, listen, sister, I told you before, way back when I was on that, when, when, when you came by me, I told you before about the breakdown. Do you believe now, sister? I'm going to break the scriptures down to you now, sis. I, I ain't never said that sis shit to one of you Israelite women, man, in my life. Because y'all ain't no sisses, really, man. Y'all really demons. That's the way I see it, anyway. That's the way I see it, man. Most of you women out there are really demons, man. And that might make, rub some people up the wrong way. But when you read the scriptures, that's pretty much what it says in there, right? So for all the women that it don't apply to, it don't apply to them. But most women out here are demons, man. And y'all you, like to hear that cis shit all the time. Oh, cis and all this. But y'all are wicked. And when it goes down, men ain't going to be trying to trying to persuade you no more, man. Y'all are going to be getting left by yourself. If one Israelite man that's not even around the other Israelite men is out there and one of you hood rats try and come up by him or one of you fake humble women that ain't even a hood rat spirit, the man ain't going to be trying to keep persuading you and telling you to get right. If you don't want to get right or if he doesn't perceive that you are right enough for him to even con communicate with in the first place, he's just going to leave you by yourself, man. And then some worldly man, he's going to find you that ain't got no kind of moral code, man, of any worth. And you're not going to want to be around them neither. But you ain't going to have a choice to be around that wicked person because a wicked portion is going to be given to you. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I rise, when I fall, I shall arise. 
when I sit in the darkness, Yahweh shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of Yahweh because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she that is my enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is Yahweh thy power? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now she shall be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Right? And most of you women are easily persuaded, man. Because you women don't need no persuading really to be wicked because that's your default settings. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's true. Really, man. A woman's default settings is wicked, man. Now, people say, oh, this guy's harsh, man. This guy's, this brother's mad, you know. This guy's harsh, brother. This guy's guy, and all you, all you hood rat eaves in America, man. They'll start, start, say, oh, this guy must be dusty or whatever. Or who hurt you and all of this. Listen, man. Don't forget all that. Let's get into this. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, right? And verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman, right? Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Women are naturally wicked, man, right? And King Solomon couldn't even find a righteous woman. So how much more, how more arrogant would I have to be to think that I can see any women that are righteous in this world? We can't, we ain't seen it, man. And most men, if they're being real, would say that, you know what, most women that they've ever seen in their life, right, including the ones that are of their family, are not right in the head, man. If, if the men were being real, you know what I mean? They'd say, you know what, most women that I've ever met in my life, I've seen some bullshit in you know? them. But then they would have seen a few guys that like, you know what, this guy was cool, you know, or this guy was cool, or this guy helped me with this situation and was genuine about that. But when it comes to women, really, like, it's not really that a lot of the times, man. It's some, always some witchcraft to it, man. Always some witchcraft to it, man. Verse 24, of, the be of women came the beginning of sin, and f of the woman came the beginning... Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Right? So from the beginning, a woman's default setting was rebellion. Right? From the book of Genesis, man, a woman's default setting was rebellion, man. And that's why it's mainly women that are on that birthday spirit all the time, man. Mainly them. Men do it too, of course. But it's mainly women that are on that stuff, and it's mainly women that push that spirit on their children among the Israelites. Because they're the ones that are the people that are around the children the most, man. Because they kick the fathers out of the house in a lot of the cases. So then it's the it's the mother just pushing on worldly things onto their child, man. Things that should not be seen as worthy. But she's pushing it on them. And the same way how they push on the Christmas spirit, man. The same way how they push on to tell their children to go to universities and get some stupid degree so that they can glory that their child's getting a degree, not knowing that they're not giving a shit that their child's degree ain't going to be worth for them, but they'll just try and push their child to get a degree so that their child will will end up in, in debt. But the dad would say, you know what, what degree is it? Oh, that, nah, don't waste your time. You can get this, you can get a job in that kind of thing if you just work here and then build that up. That's what kind of thing a dad will do. But a mother will try and glory. Oh, I've got one kid in university now. And the other one's on his way. He's 15. He's going to be at university soon. He's planning, he's, he's planning on being an architect. That's what mums will do. Yeah. So that they can glory and boast when they're getting that cackling cauldron. That's that ether circle of for that cipher of friends where they're all in a circle drinking lattes. Running their gums. Right. And that they can all boast in about things, man, and try and make each other jealous. But you know what, man? Y'all keep doing what you're doing, man. Because when it goes down, there's going to be a lot of women that are going to be in this Wisdom wisdom of Solomon 5 scenario, man. There's going to be a lot of women that thought that it was a joke and a game that are going to be in this Wisdom of Solomon 5 and Wisdom of Solomon 4. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 17. For they shall see the end of the wise and shall not understand what God and his counsel have decreed of him and to what end you have set them in safety. They shall see him and despise him, but God shall laugh them to scorn and they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. And isn't that saying in the scriptures that the women are going to be trodden down as the mighty streets? So you know there's going to be women up in there and wicked men, man. Verse 19, for he shall rend them and cast them down headlong, that they shall be speechless. 
Doesn't it say in the scriptures in Isaiah 3 and the last chapter of Isaiah 3 that her gates shall lament and mourn and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground? So women aren't going to be having a, a pit being opinionated and talking about how men can't handle them. You're right. Men don't men can't and don't want to handle you. That's what it's going to be in the time to come. They can't and they won't. You understand? They don't want to handle you. That's what it's going to be. You ain't going to be able to think you can shame nobody into doing anything that you want them to do. You're going to be out there, left hang, hung out to dry and f left in the dirt where you was found, man. You're going to be in the dirt, desolate, and your gates are going to remain and mourn. And that's the same place you're going to be left. And then you're going to see the kind of qualities in women that have, have humbled themselves and been humble. And they're going to find that them qualities are not in you and never have been. And you're going to be left out there, man. And there ain't going to be no one to come and help you. Not one person. For he shall rend them and cast them down headlong, that they shall be speechless, and he shall shake them from the foundation, and they shall be utterly laid waste, and be in sorrow, and their memorials shall perish. And when they cast up the accounts of their sins, they shall come with fear, and their own iniquity shall convince them to their face. And that's going to be accountability for all people, man. For men and for women. Because for the longest time in this world, women have been getting away with all kind of things. For all kind of things, man. But Yahweh is setting up that that's not going to be the case anymore. Verse 5. Then, the, then shall a righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such have afflicted him and made no account of his labours. Like how women do, man. And like how Esau's did. Not making any account of the labours of what the Israelites have did in this society in general. You know what I mean? Because the way our this world views it is, if we'd really did such labours, then we should be the richest in the world. Not taking into account anything regarding all the little outside secret secretive things that's going on behind the scenes to try and make sure that we don't have any wealth. They're like, nah, forget that. Just get it. Get the money. Get money. And shut your talking. <laughs> that's how they think. You know? They just think, do it. Make something happen. That's what they think. As if they ain't sinned in, 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 under the curses themselves, man. That's how, that's how these hoes think, man. That's how they think. But you know what? The Lord's got all of them, man. And it's not, it's, it's, this isn't no thing of me saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm crying about nothing. I'm pointing out the wickedness in this world, man, that I see. I'm pointing out the wickedness in this world that I see, man. I'm sighing and I'm crying for all the abominations. That are done in the midst thereof, man. We ain't just doing what the world does and crying about one portion of wickedness that we have a particular problem with. We're crying about all the wickedness, man. We got a problem and a grievance with all of it, man. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Verse 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. So, all you birthday celebrators, all you Christmas Day celebrators, all you Easter enthusiasts right all you halloween halloween hooligans right all of you people are going to be losing your mind out there man when you see that all of those days that you were celebrating were bs man that was bull that wasn't worth nothing and you're going to be wishing that you never celebrate any of those things man once you found out that them things were pagan and decided decided to just ignore it you're going to be wishing that you never ate pork right you're going to be wishing that you didn't go to the barbers and say, yeah, shake me up and put that baby powder around my head. But yeah, put the baby powder hairline around there. And then take that little round brush thing and hit it off the front of my head. And then spray that spray that stings the hell out of your neck as well. Let's spray that on there too. Oh, give me a taper fade. But I've got, it's a taper fade around the back. by by Right by the sideburns. Where the sideburn meets the beard. Right? It's faded there. But I'm only going to fade that bit though. Because I'm smooth like that. You're going to wish you never did all of that, man. That you never went off because of a haircut or went off because you wanted to eat pork instead of turkey bacon or some kind of righteous alternative, you know? Verse 3, And they repented and groaned for anguish of spirit, so say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools account his life madness and his entry without honour. And I'm going to say this again, man, there's repentance. If people have did any of the things that I've said in this video, right? There's repentance. But you have to have a stronger spirit as time's going by. Otherwise, you're just going to be cast away, man. And that goes for me too. That goes for me too, man. 
This is this is uh, this whole thing about believing in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is about repentance. It's not about trying to be over righteous. It's about repentance, man. That if there's something that you're weak in, then we pray to Yahweh about that. So if you're weak in, oh, I, I'd like to taste the pork, we'll pray that that spirit gets taken off you. If you're weak in, oh, I like to have my hair shaped up because I like the way it looks, pray to Yahweh that you don't care about that no more, that you don't care what other people think about your hairline or that you find a haircut that's righteous. You know what I mean? Or that you don't care about whether the world cares whether you want to celebrate your birthday anymore, whether you want to celebrate your friend's birthday anymore, or your mom's birthday, or your dad's birthday, or your uncles and aunties, or your cousin's birthday, or your best friend in the world's birthday. Oh, you always used to go to their birthday and celebrate down at the local hotspot high street nightclubs where the nightclubs are at. Now you're not doing that no more though, and pray to not be doing it, man. Verse 4, we fought the God is like madness and is interview without honour. Because people look at the way how you are when you don't believe in these things and they think it's boring, man. So they think that the way that we live is madness. Because they think, what do you do that's fun? They think, man, you don't do nothing. You people don't do nothing, man. You don't celebrate birthdays. You don't go to nightclubs. You're not all up in the world. You're not out there chasing gal talking about, yo, babes. You're not doing all of that. So what do you do? That's how they think. Because you're not running around holding the back of your head, pushing your pelvis forward, talking about, oh, bruv, look at the back. You're not doing all that talk all the time, right? You're not you're not trying to glorify yourself and become a bodybuilding Olympian, Olympics finest, right? They think, man, what you're not trying, you're not out there just chasing loads of money. So they think, man, what's this what is this guy then? What is this woman or this person? What is this, what are these people that believe in these things? What is it that they do? Because the things that they're saying they're waiting for don't seem likely to happen. So their life is madness in my eyes. That's how people look at it, man. Because they don't see, they don't see that this society can form, man. They don't see that, they think who can make war with the beast? Who's greater than Babylon the Great? That's how they think. They think as long as Babylon the Great exists, there's always going to be a remnant and a portion of this kind of society existing because it's just going to be more and more Americans, America spreading everywhere else the ways of america will just spread everywhere else and everybody else is just gonna have to ultimately conform to what america does that's how these people think man verse six therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us we weird ourselves in a way of wickedness and destruction yea celebrating all these wicked days that you're not supposed to celebrate right committing adultery being murderers bearing false witness being tail bearers, right? Celebrating pagan gods, worshipping pagan gods, right? All of this madness that people do, being proud, glorifying in your might, glorifying in your wisdom, glorifying in your riches, being a scoffer, making five different accounts that you use to scoff and faking like they're all different people and commenting between each account to try and make it like, yeah, these Hebrews are mad, you know, this man's mad and all this to try and seem like you're you're um, against that there's more people against the truth than there is, man. Finding out people's private information and sending it to people, right? Lying and saying that men are harming are harming people when they're not harming people. Lying and saying that men are doing this and doing that. Finding out personal things about people's lives that you've got a problem with. And then sharing that information among other people so that they can have a problem with it. Some people are going to be judged for these kind of things, man. But And some people... Because they're of the elect, are going to receive mercy on that and have already been judged for doing such things, man. Or are going to receive judgment for doing such things. And if any of us do these things, we'll be judged too if we're of the elect, man. But that will be for repentance sake. So that we can repent and think about the wickedness that we did and repent to Yahweh for doing that stuff, man. And if we get the chance to repent to the person that's done these crimes too, then we'll repent to them too. But ultimately, it's more important that you repent to your hour. Verse 7, we weird ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where they lay no way. But as for the way of your hour, we have not known it because these people don't know the way of the Lord, man. They know the way of this world, right? They know the way of this world, man. The high value man, read the high value man, start a pack, you know? You've got to have a hundred thousand pounds 
in your bank account. You've got to have making 100,000 a year. You've got to have a year's savings saved up. And then afterwards, then you've got to get into stocks. And then you've got to get into cryptos. And then you've got to have some more assets, which I ain't saying that any of these things, a person can't take part in these things for a short term period while they're, while they're there, the Lord's waiting to happen. But we're not supposed to be thinking of it in a thing that we're going to grow in this world and become become um <laughs> become the new the newest high value men high value man bro the new high value man archetype because that all those people that finna their high value men of this world but well, then that means that you're going to be the least in the kingdom especially those i'm talking about you people that are israelites man the highest value israelite in this world is going to be the least in the kingdom but some israelites out there are trying to become worth millions out here, man, while still being being Israelites and having the same net worth as Ben Affleck, which is ridiculous, if you ask me. That Israelite, potentially, if the numbers are true, has got the same net worth as a man that's played Batman. <laughs> that don't make no sense, but hey, I ain't, gonna, I ain't saying it's true or not on that information, but if, it, if, it, if it's even 10% of the predicted earnings, that's still a lot of money, man. That's still a lot of money. If it's even 5% of the predicted earnings, that would be like 7.5 million or something like that. You know? But hey, it is what it is, man. You know? Verse 8, what have pride profited us? Or what good have Richie with our vaunting brought us? And what's one of the things that's pride? Celebrating your birthday. Right? Celebrating your birthday comes from pride. Because you think that there's something glorious about the day when you was born. When all the things that happen in a birthday, you could easily do them any other day, man. You could easily throw a party any other day. That's not even anywhere around your birthday. Because you ain't slick if you say, oh, I'm going to celebrate it one day before or one day after. You ain't being slick, man. You how it knows what you're really doing. Verse 9, all those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasted by. And as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water which when it goeth by the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the path of the kill the waves are all pride and riches are going to perish away anyway. Anybody that's got a company that's an Israelite and they're doing their thing with that, fair enough, man. If you are, And if they're of the elect, it's not going to cause them to be led astray. Anybody that's got any money from any asset or anything, fair enough. It's not going to, if they're of the elect, it's not going to cause them to stray. But all those things are going to pass away because we've got new riches waiting for us, for us in the kingdom anyway. Anybody that's any brother that's got a job that pays them a lot of money, that don't mean that they're supposed to retire. I mean that they're supposed to quit and let's, and go in and hit their boss with a stone cold stunner and say, "I retire, you damn devil." They ain't supposed to do that. They're supposed to still carry on making that money, but know that that job ultimately can become a snare onto you if you love it too much, and that stuff's gonna have to be given away, given up anyway when all hell breaks loose, man. Because we ain't just gonna be going to work. And all of these things and just being able to go to the corner store and stock up the shelves when all hell's breaking loose. That's not going to be able to happen. It's going to be a whole different way of living at that time. Verse 13. Even so we in like manner as soon as we were born began to draw to our end and had no sign of virtue to show but were consumed in our own wickedness, man. And celebrating your birthdays and all of these kind of things, that ultimately comes from pride man and from you thinking that there's something special about you that you need to glory in man and that needs to be worshipped man when there ain't nothing special about us man the only thing that can be special about us is, and anything that can be special about us is something that we ultimately didn't choose and that will be of, if we're of the elect then there's something special about us but we can't even glory in that because that wasn't even of ourself that was of grace right it was a gift that was given through through faith man through 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 grace you know Ephesians 2 and 8, which will be our end of lesson on this, in fact. I was just thinking about that whole birthday spirit, man, and how people glorifying themselves, and they are always finding more and more ways to glory in themselves, man. Everyone's got a, um, some kind of Instagram account now, and they've got their so-called followers on there. Everyone's got all these things that they have to glorify themselves. They've got a tick to Twitter, you know. They've got all, they've got YouTube accounts. That they're using to glorify themselves. They, they can say, oh, send me a super chat and all this support my support my channel. Follow me on Patreon and all of that. Right? 
But really, everyone's really struggling down here, really, if there was being real about it. And that's why everyone's trying to make it off social media and all these things. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. You, exactly how we don't want no one to boast. But if you're, if you're celebrating your birthday, that's you boasting, man. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with noticing that, okay, I've become older now. So I need to change this or I'm going to change that. I'm thinking, I'm glad that I was able to be able to be alive for this long. You know what I mean? There's not nothing wrong with that. Like, let's say, for example, a, bro a, a brother had a father that died at a certain age or something like that, right? Kind of like what Bruce Lee's father did. He died at a certain age, right? And you was managed to able to live longer than your father, right? There's not nothing wrong with being happy that you was able to live to a certain age or something like that. But that don't mean you're supposed to be celebrating your birthday, man. Because you how I ultimately don't want us to boast in anything. And a birthday celebration is definitely a boast, man. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in a mashiach, how a shy unto good works, which you have before ordained that we should walk in them. So even the good things that we do, you have us ordained that we was going to walk in them things. So we can't even glory in that, man. Because it's all of Yahweh. All of it, man. I'm going to end the lesson there. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Makar Kodash. Double and to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the elect of Israel. Shalom.